My name's Jonathan Sharp. I'm the Sales and Marketing Director of Britannic Technologies. Uh, we've got a long-standing partnership uh, with Trail Finders, uh, who are talking today, uh, which spans 25 years. Uh, it started not, uh, back in 1989 when we provided the first call center solution uh, for Trail Finders uh, in, uh, in Kensington High Street. And, uh, and really throughout uh, what is a very successful 25 years, has seen the organization grow from uh, uh, 50 staff to in excess of uh, 1,000 staff today, uh, with turnover in excess of half a billion pounds a year. Uh, we've managed the change uh, with Trail Finders through a whole load of different technology over that time, through analog, digital, IP, and more latterly, cloud uh, services and technology. We've partnered with uh, the likes of uh, Mitel and Computertel to deliver what is state-of-the-art uh, uh, solutions uh, for Trail Finders today. Also complemented with their own technology and uh, uh, very innovative middleware, uh, such as CT integration and our own SIP trunking platform, and what is uh, uh, a very resilient and, uh, and scalable cloud service platform. It's really great to be, uh, uh, to be here today with, uh, with Matthew from Trail Finders, to be able to share uh, really uh, the developments that are taking place in the, uh, in the technology space, but also in recognition of Trail Finders, a multi-award winning organization, winning many accolades uh, from the likes of, uh, of Witch and, uh, and The Telegraph and The Guardian. And I think for me as well, some of the, uh, some of the other awards that they've uh, received uh, the likes of super brand and cool brand leader, uh, which only a very small handful of organizations have, uh, have ever been awarded both, the likes of uh, O2 and Coca-Cola. And we're gonna look at uh, how the contact centers really helped to drive business uh, for trail finders and support this uh, uh, exceptional growth. And I think for me, what is really interesting is trail finders have, uh, have really bucked the trend, uh, choosing not to uh, uh, provide an online booking service, but to excel uh, based upon the quality of, uh, uh, of, uh, of consultants and the intelligence and experience that they have to deliver what is an ex exceptional level of customer service uh, across the organization. So ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, it gives me absolute great pleasure to introduce to you uh, Matthew Raymond, the Systems Director of uh, Trail Finders, who will share with you uh, really the strategy and how they've executed upon uh, uh, developing the contact center uh, and more latterly moving into the cloud. Thank you. Thompson. Thanks very much. Morning, everybody. Um, as Jonathan said, I'm Matthew Raymond, and I'm in charge of IT and systems at Trail Finders, and first met Britannic, actually even before 1989. Um, we, we prided ourselves on having the biggest lamp and key telephone system in the UK. Or was it, it was either lamp and key or key and lamp. It's so long ago I've forgotten the terminology. But um, we had a BT Herald that was the, uh, our pride and joy. And, and right through from those early days um, with Britannic, we've developed through all the various different phases. Um, you'll be relieved to hear that I'm not going to take you through the entire history blow by blow, but I'm going to try and focus on the most recent part of the story, which is the move from a traditional hardware PBX-based solution distributed around lots of locations to a centralized um, SIP-based uh, cloud stroke private cloud type implementation. So it's really covering the last uh, two to three years. Um, and, and how we've made that move, what Britannic's involvement is, and also importantly, what Mitel, um, how Mitel have been involved. So I've got some um, kickoff slides, which are really just a, a quick introduction to Trail Finders. Um, you're only about probably five or 10 minutes walk from our two sort of flagship travel centers, which are both on Kensington High Street, bizarrely right opposite each other. Um, I can't, a strange sort of initial business growth, we ended up with these two locations right next to each other. But since those first two in Kensington, we've expanded to locations all around the UK uh, and three very successful locations in the Republic of Ireland in Cork and Limerick and, and Dublin. 
So really that's A, to bang, sort of bang our drum, but also to give you an idea of the environment that we're talking about here in terms of the telephony and the setup. Um, that, that's a picture of the outside of the shop and covers what, you know, what I've already told you about uh, how we're distributed. Um, what I really want to give you an idea of, and it is going to be very broad brush, is, is moving from you know, a, a position around about two to three years ago to where we are today in terms of how the telephony is set up and in terms of how Mitel and, and Britannic have been involved in that. I mean, I should say, reiterate the point that Jonathan made, that, that the telephone is uh, the primary business tool for us still today. We do not have any online fulfillment whatsoever, so there are lots of companies in our space, in the travel space, where the telephone system might go down for half a day, and they go, well, that's okay, because you know, the online booking engine's been working fine. Um, and uh, that isn't the case for us. All of our business is conducted either on either in the travel centre on a on a face to face, or or over the telephone. So it's it's absolutely a critical. I mean, it's critical to everyone anyway, but to us it is is if you like even more so because it is the the, the primary tool. Um, We, I said 90% of our business, I think that's probably about the right split. 90 over the phone, 10% in person. Um, so you can see that you know, even a small period of downtime uh, on the phone systems has a, an immediate impact. Um, and it's, it's with that 90% in mind that um, I sort of set the scene really for, for, the, for the, the changeover period that we're talking about. So as we expanded throughout the UK and, and into Ireland, our, our traditional setup, um, I might have it on the next slide, was, well, this is more about what we were trying to achieve, but the, the basic setup that we had was one that I think most of you would recognize, which is every time we went to open a travel center, so somebody said we want to open in Nottingham, uh, we had a very simple structured way of dealing with that, and it involved uh, Mitel were very happy with us, and so were Britannic, in, involved buying a Mitel 3300, which is basically a PBX. I mean, if you don't know the specific product range, it doesn't matter. So every location that we came to, we had this blueprint that, that was one that, like I say, most people would recognize from, from, well, even from now, but certainly from a few years ago. Uh, order ISDN lines from British Telecom, uh, order a Mitel 3300, and then typically there were two or three additional um, x86 based servers to run all the various applications that ran with the contact center. So in other words, each location was in its own way a self-contained contact center. It had a complete um, uh, infrastructure built around it. Um, so every time somebody said, well, we're gonna, you know, we wanna open somewhere else, it, it was fine, but there was a, there was a, a fairly big logistical and cost base to, to, to roll these things out. Um, the other critical element of, of, and I'll come on to the implementation diagram, because that's really, you know, that, that's the core of the story, which is, is where we move to now. The, the, the most uh, important element of where we are at and, and why we decided to make this move was we had effectively 28 different contact centers distributed around the UK and Ireland because each of them had, uh, a, like I said, a standalone phone system. Um, what that translated to in, in practicality was um, it, it worked extremely well. If the client wanted to ring Glasgow, they rang a Glasgow number. It presented itself on the Glasgow ISDN in the Glasgow Travel Center onto the Glasgow PBX uh, where somebody answered it. You know, that, that bit we can all, you know, that's very straightforward. But of course, it scaled very poorly when we got into any kind of situation where everybody in Glasgow was busy, but everybody in Nottingham was twiddling their thumbs. And so over the years, we had evolved lots and lots of different ways of kind of networking all these PBXs together, which I certainly, I mean, I won't bore you with all the details of how we tried to do that, but. All of you who've been involved in this kind of stuff will be familiar with call overflow paths and, you know, 
uh, spilling calls from one location to another, then moving them back. But all of this was being done on top of a physical ISDN layer. So you could only ever receive the actual telephone call into the location where you had the ISDN. I mean, I know that's stating the obvious, but it's, looking back on it now, it seems, you know, it, it seems clear to me now that this, this is a better route to go. But initially, and for some considerable time after Jonathan and Britannic were proposing this as an idea, I remained very nervous about it. Because essentially what this does, without going, you know, I mean, we'll get into a bit more detail, but it essentially says, right, we're going to take all of the telephone calls that are coming into your organization, and instead of distributing them across 27 or 28 or however many ISDN 30s that we've got dotted around, we're going to lump them all into one bucket that's going to come into the cloud, the famous cloud. Um, and from the cloud, it's going to be distributed into a central point in our network, and we'll then distribute all the calls out. Now, saying it like that now, it seems like, well, yeah, well, it's a big deal. You know, we're every, isn't everyone doing that? Um, at the time, uh, and still sometimes today, that seemed incredibly unnerving. Because my first question, of course, was, um, well, what happens if it all goes wrong in the cloud? And they said, well, you won't get any phone calls. I said, what, none? Uh, no. Uh, and you won't be able to make any calls either? Uh, no. We, I mean, we, we made the decision to go completely away from physical ISDN. So uh, it, it took quite a bit of back and forth with, with Jonathan and Richard of Britannic uh, sort of going, you know, look, but, but look at all the advantages. Um, and, and those are, you know, I will come on to those in a moment. But essentially, that's the real takeaway from my presentation, or I guess any of the stuff that's going out on the floor, was the decision to go away from a physical phone circuit that has to be located somewhere in your organization, even if it's in the cloud, to the presentation of all of our inbound and outbound telephony over SIP through the BT. I mean, our, our SIP provision right at the top is, is BT, but that could be anybody. I mean, that, you know, that, that happens to be our flavor. Um, and from the cloud, it comes into the infrastructure that Mitel and, and Britannic have built for us, um, which is a product called NetX, which is a Britannic product, but is essentially a, a, um, a, the SIP, the, the secret source around dealing with the incoming SIP calls. And eventually, it permeates its way through into our little cloud, uh, and then out to our users out to the telephone handsets. I mean, I'm, I'm oversimplifying it because in some respects it is that simple. So we went from 28 PBXs dotted around here, there, and everywhere to effectively one giant PBX that was being fed entirely by um, SIP telephony, both inbound and outbound. Now, the, just to run you through a couple of the advantages, I may have it actually... Um, well, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll say a few words about the actual changeover in a second. But um, the most important thing, as I say, is, is, is to get that idea, is, is the, uh, the move to centralized telephony. And pretty much overnight, once I committed to the idea and really got, you know, really decided, right, well, we're going to go for it, the, the, the advantages to us simply outweighed the disadvantages in the end. I suppose that's true of any of the projects any of us get involved in, really. Um, the enormous power of being able to deliver local STD code numbers to anywhere that I wanted in our network was really the final kind of persuasive factor. So in the old days, if we had a fire in Glasgow and the PB, I don't know, the ISDN failed or the PBX went up in smoke, there was very little we could do other than ring up BT and ask them to forward the number to actually distribute the calls they were tied down to that location. I mean, occasionally you could get BT to divert to somewhere else, but we then have to distribute from there. Um, the enormous comfort that I have now standing here is, is, is whatever happens in any of our locations, the distribution of all of our telephony can be evenly spread across the entire group, um, at, and it is entirely under our control. 
So I get a message after this presentation that says there's been, a, a, there's been a, an earthquake in Cambridge. Um, and our travel centers, you know, has been, lost all power. Um, you know, in the old days, that and some of you would have been involved in this, that would have been, oh, oh my God, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? Um, oh, I know. We're, right, we'll call BT. We'll get the numbers diverted. We'll get the staff relocated somewhere else. We're da, 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 you know, a whole series of steps. Um, I actually literally wouldn't have to do anything now because those calls will immediately, because they're all coming. In fact, let me just go back a second because it, um, because all telephony arrives in this one bucket in the middle, we can put it to anywhere, and we can put it to anywhere dynamically. So, I mean, I wouldn't even necessarily know Cambridge had stopped taking calls. Well, I, I mean, I would, I'd get a, an alert, but it wouldn't make any impact to me because the calls just continue to distribute throughout the organization. And most importantly, they do that without me having to use 0845 or, or, or any of the other services that allow for distributed numbers. People who ring trail finders ring local or, or national STD numbers, 0207 368 1200, you know, 0207 368 1300. Nobody now is calling any kind of um, uh, a geographical or, or um, a toll number. Um, and that's only possible because of this, because of our ability to move the calls around. Now, most of the time, when somebody rings Glasgow, of course, what you want to do is get them answered in Glasgow. But when that's not possible, they can be answered anywhere else with, with any set of timings or, or, um, uh, or structure that we decide on. So we're completely masters of our own telephone exchange, if you like. I mean, that's, that's a sort of crude description. But, you know, w we decide where the calls go. We don't have to ring British Telecom and say, would you mind diverting this ISTN? It's all um, within our control. So um, back to this slide. Uh, a little bit about how it was done. Um, obviously, we, it, it had to be done gradually. We couldn't just take 28 PBXs out of commission overnight. And so the nice thing with SIP anyway is that you're able to, we were able to stagger the transition through the travel centers. So you can go to Cambridge and move them into the cloud bring out the PBX, but leave the rest in place for the time being. So you get a very nice, I mean, depending on how many sites you need to do, you get a very comfortable and easy transition from, from the traditional structure to the new structure. And again, that's entirely down to the flexibility that SIP and, and SIP telephony give you. Um, uh, this is really a, a, a reiteration of what I guess it's done for us, which is, is uh, the telephone, as I said at the beginning, is the critical business mechanism for us. This has empowered us to continue delivering calls to where the resources are at any given time. Um, we've got a lot of CTI integration, which uh, Jonathan uh, mentioned earlier on, which is, you know, the nowadays it's fairly standard, but when we started doing it, you know, the idea of taking calls and instantly recognizing the client was was uh, was you know, was exciting and that still works very well for us. But again, with the centralization model, all of that becomes much easier. You don't have to have servers dotted around in, in, in all of these locations. Um, the personalized local service really is a reference back to this idea of using traditional local telephone numbers. That we wanted all of our incoming telephony to be, you know, we wanted to retain a set of numbers for each of the locations where we go. Because we're continuing to open new locations. We've, we've got a, uh, a new travel center opening in St. Albans in um, uh, next month sometime. Um, and, uh, and one or two locations planned after that. So our business model is still very much about going to specific places. And in St. Albans, there will be a St. Albans number. But of course, it won't be going anywhere near the St. Albans Travel Center. It will be delivered into the SIP cloud and then back out through the cloud, through the NetX infrastructure and, and to the handsets. Business continuity and vital resilience. Well, this, as I said at the beginning, this was, um, uh, yes, I'm, I'm coming towards the end of the time, so I should focus on this. That This was one of the key elements, because when this solution was first presented to me, uh, that was my biggest fear, was what happens if we lose this central telephony piece. 
you know, and, and, the, and the answer is, I mean, everyone here is facing that. The answer is very blunt. You lose everything. You know, I mean, I, I existed in a world previously where I could, as I was saying, I could lose Glasgow and Nottingham but think, well, it's bad, but I'm not going to get the sack because there's another 25 locations still taking calls. Clearly, in this environment, it is absolutely critical that you have a totally resilient environment in the center. And that has been a massive part of what Britannic and, and Mitel have offered us. Um, we have to have total confidence that that infrastructure will hold up. And therefore, in that diagram, you've noticed that there were two distinct sides which are basically resilient paths. Um, the competitive edge and the seasonal demands is an important one for us. I, I talked about opening in St Albans. I mean, the difference now for us opening a new location in this environment is extraordinary. Where I would have been turning up with a van, with a Mitel PBX, three or four IBM servers, um, software installation to do on those servers, uh, ISTN lines to order and configure. Uh, the only thing I now need to take with me to St Albans is a router, a switch to plug the phones and the PCs into, and a data circuit to connect me back into the middle. That's it. Oh, and handsets, of course. They still need telephone handsets. So. It, it's, it's almost unrecognizable from our previous setup. I mean, we, we could, well, as you'll be hearing from some of these other vendors, I'm sure, in the show, we could pretty much set up a, a, a trail finders here in this auditorium in about, you know, with the right internet connectivity, you know, with the right connectivity, we'd probably put four or five desks together in about 20 minutes. You know, it, it's that kind of flexibility. We do a lot of travel shows. Um, We've got home workers. I, I mean, I've got an extension at home that just routes straight through from my work extension because everything is now in a, in a central location. And particularly for expansion and opening new locations and being able to look at smaller locations, it's enormously powerful. Um, yes, sorry, that's really, I've covered that with the rollout. Um, Mitel have been a brilliant solution for us. I think that, you know, I, I guess there's, of course, an element of sales in any of these presentations. I can only talk about my experience with the Mitel product. It's been superb. We've been using it for about 10 years, even prior to this centralization, and it's been a huge success for us. I, I think that's as much as I can say on that, really. It's, there were a number of other IP products that we looked at when we first made the move, and um, I'm, I'm glad we chose the one we did. Britannic, uh, as Jonathan said at the beginning, we've been working with since, he said 1989, I think it's more like 1987, but um, it's, it's a hell of a long time anyway, uh, through all kinds of incarnations, and that continues to be a strong relationship. Their experience with SIP and with NetX was, was critical to us in, in this environment. They, they were really the, uh, the catalyst in giving us the courage to go ahead and do it. Um, advice to others contemplating a move. I, I, well, do it, obviously, would be my initial advice. I mean, the, you know, uh, in some ways, I wish we'd done it sooner. Well, of course, one always thinks that. Um, I, the, the unease I had about resilience was, was unfounded. Um, the benefits have massively outweighed any um, potential um, pitfalls so far. I mean, I should touch wood, but... It, you know, so far there's no question. It's 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 been it's delivered us a far more resilient and flexible way of operating than we had with the traditional PBX environment. Um, I, the one thing I would say is that, it, like all of this stuff, and in fact, like any of the stuff that's on show here today, the dependence on the network and understanding your wide area network, of course, just keeps going up and up and up. And I find that is our continuing challenge, is being able to diagnose and maintain our wide area network is more important than ever. I mean, it was important anyway, clearly, but um, it really, the more centralized the environment becomes, the more critical it is that you're able to react quickly to any issues. Um, because now, obviously, I don't, you know, if, if there's a networking issue, then voice is, is suffering as well as data. Um, it, the, the platform has been a huge success for us. It's, a, it's done what we wanted it to do, which was allow us to retain a local feel and a local presence, local telephone numbers, but across 
a, a big range of locations with the ability to distribute calls throughout those. Uh, the contact center management software is extremely powerful and works extremely well for us. That's also Mitel Prairie Fire supplied. Um, so I think I'm going to finish there. Thank you very much for listening to me, and uh, I hope you're able to take something away from the session. Thank you.